Hi, welcome to another tutorial in my series on second order linear differential equations, which equal some function of x. Now, in the first tutorial in this series, I showed you that the general solution was of the form y equals a complementary function plus a particular integral, cf plus pi for short. And in this video, we're going to be looking at equations where f of x is a trigonometric function. And in this example, we've got to find the general solution to the equation d2y by dx squared plus 2 times dy by dx minus 3y equals 6 cos 2x. And we're given that the complementary function for this equation is a e to the power minus 3x plus b e to the power x. And if you're unsure how we get this complementary function, then just click on this link up here and it will go back to a tutorial that uh, showed you how I got this. Okay, so first of all, we need to work out what the particular integral is going to be. So pi then for short. Now when we're dealing with trigonometric functions of the form, say, m cos nx, if you like, in this example, 6 cos 2x, then whether it's 6 cos 2x or even 6 sine 2x, then the particular integral that we use is to let y equal any constant, let's say lambda, then we have cos 2x, but it doesn't stop there. We put plus another constant, let's say mu, and then we multiply that with sine 2x. So I could have had, say, 6 sine 3x here, rather than cos 2x, 6 sine 3x. My particular integral would have been of the form y equals lambda cos 3x plus mu sine 3x. So as I say, it doesn't matter whether you've got cosine here or sine, go for this style. Okay, well on that basis we do as we've done many times before in these types of questions, if you've been looking at them, and that is to find dy by dx, and then the second differential, and we'll substitute those values into the equation. Okay, so for this one, if we differentiate y with respect to x, for this first term here, we're going to get minus 2 lambda sine 2x. And then when we differentiate the second term here with respect to x, we're going to get plus 2 mu cos 2x. Okay, so that's dy by dx. Now we need the second differential, d2y by dx squared. So differentiating the first term here is going to give us minus 4 lambda cos 2x. And then if we differentiate this term here, we're going to get minus 4 mu sine 2x. Okay, so we've got y dy dx and d2y by dx squared. Now, because there's lack of room here, what I'm going to do is we'll substitute these values into this equation up here. We'll call it 1, okay? So we'll sub into 1. Okay, sub into 1. But what we're going to have now is that for this term, minus 3y, let's just treble all these values here. So we've got that minus 3y equals, well, times this by minus 3, we're going to get minus 3 lambda cos 2x. And if we times this term by minus 3, we get minus 3 mu sine 2x. Next, we've got to add two lots of dy by dx. So if we do two lots of dy by dx, 2 dy by dx, what are we going to get for this one? Well, if we double each of these terms, what I'm going to do is take this term first so that I can work in columns here. And we'll have this 
first column as the cos2x um, terms. So I'll double this term. So we've got 4 mu cos2x, 4 mu cos2x. And if I double this term, we're going to have minus 4 lambda sine 2x. And finally, we've got d2y by dx squared. We don't have to do anything to that. So let's just copy that in, d2y by dx squared. We'll take it in the order that it's there. So we've got minus 4 lambda cos 2x, and then minus 4 mu sine 2x. OK, well, if we now add these terms together, OK, we add these terms together, then we can see that if we compare the cos 2x terms, looking at this first column here, we've got a total of minus 7 lambda plus 4 mu, and that must equal the 6. So let's just border this off, OK, and we'll say we'll compare the cos 2x terms. We'll look at the coefficients there. So as I say, we've got minus 3 lambda, minus 4 lambda, that's minus 7 lambda, and then plus the 4 mu, and that must equal the 6 here. Let's also compare now the coefficients of sine 2x. So we'll just write that here, compare sine 2x coefficients. And again, if we do this, what we've got is minus 4 lambda. And for the mu, we've got minus 3 mu, minus 4 mu, that's minus 7 mu. And we've got no terms on the right hand side that are sine 2x, so the coefficients of those would be 0 then. Now if you were to solve these two simultaneous equations for lambda and mu, you'd find that lambda turns out to be minus 42 over 65. I'll leave it up to you to just work that out. And mu will turn out to be 24 over 65. So what that means now is that the particular integral PI for short then, is going to be, well we've got it as being lambda cos 2x, so it's going to be minus 42, 60 fifths cos 2x, and then we've got plus mu sine 2x, so it's plus 24, 60 fifths of sine 2x, and that gives us our particular integral. So what we have next is the general solution. I'll just abbreviate that to GS. And that's going to be the complementary function, which is AE to the power minus 3x plus BE to the power x. And then to that, we just have to add our particular integral. So instead of it being a plus, we've now really got minus 42 60 fifths then of cos 2x and then plus 24 60 fifths of sine 2x. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea now how we can handle trig types of the form where you've got a constant, say, multiplied by cos of some multiple angle, or this would work just as equally well if it was a constant times sine of some multiple angle. Still take this kind of form for a particular integral. Well that brings us now to the end of this tutorial, but I've got others in this series if you haven't looked at them, which I would strongly encourage you to do, purely because it affects the way we set out the particular integral. I've got ones where we look at constants, 
functions of x which are linear functions, quadratic functions and exponential functions. And if you go on my website examsolutions.net you should find some links there to these particular videos. Okay.